Hey everybody, in early October I made a whirlwind trip to Iowa City for the Refocus Film Festival, which is all about adaptations, literary and otherwise, and organized by a local nonprofit cinema called Film Scene. And from there, I flew to New York City to meet up with my family for the Bones and All screening on Saturday, October 8th at the New York Film Festival. I managed to pack a lot into these four days, including two fabulous vegan restaurants with some of my new favorite comfort food. So let me tell you all about it. First of all, I had layovers in Chicago on both trips. And let me point out that Chibo Express has some of the best vegan options I have ever seen in an airport. I also got a blue spirulina smoothie from Jamba Juice. Walking around town when I arrived in Iowa City, it was such a thrill to see Bones and All on the marquee at the Englert Theater. That evening, Andrew and Ben, film scene executive director and programming director, respectively, took me and Dave out for dinner at Trumpet Blossom, the best, the only vegan restaurant in Iowa City, and we went over some of the points we wanted to make and themes we wanted to cover in the after screening discussion that would take place the following evening. The next morning, Dave took me to the graveyard where he used to go on long walks as a grad student. And a local co-op had some really yummy sandwiches, one of which I had for breakfast. Then I went to Prairie Lights, my new favorite indie bookstore, where I had a lovely chat with the owner, Jan, did some shopping and had a second cup of coffee in the upstairs cafe. And back to Trumpet Blossom for lunch. Carrot juice, tomato soup with corn cakes, and an eggless tofu salad wrap, which I ended up eating for dinner later. Then I did a quick interview with the local TV station, and then it was time to get ready for the opening night of the film festival. We had a cocktail party beforehand, then the screening, then the discussion, then the after party. And I have to say this was definitely one of the most enjoyable events of my entire career. It is such a joy to have professional interactions with people who are both ultra capable and effective and very warm and kind and welcoming. I really cannot say enough good things about Andrew and Ben and the rest of the folks at Film Scene. And of course, big shout out to David Greedy for his wonderful photography. Truth be told, it startled me to hear how often the audience was laughing during the screening and I had to keep reminding myself that it was nervous laughter and it was so gratifying to hear how everybody cheered once Marin and Lee arrived in Iowa for the carnival. My conversation with Dave and Ben after the screening went well, I'll link to it below, and the after party was wonderful too. I had many substantive conversations about both the vegan subtext and the concept of ego management, which I knew would resonate with this community since the University of Iowa has the most prestigious creative writing program in the country. And I got to meet Shannon Malloy, who wrote and performed the wonderful Bones and All song I played in the fan art video, and her husband, Scott. The next morning, Dave invited me out for brunch with some of his students at the Iowa Writers Workshop, which was lovely, of course. I am always up for a candid chat about craft and business. By the way, what do vegans have for brunch at a regular omnivorous diner type place? Well, I generally order coffee black if they don't have plant milk and fruit salad and I will order a cup of oatmeal. I just asked to make sure that it was cooked in water. Dave left for London that afternoon and I walked around campus for a bit, picked up an Iowa Hawkeyes ball cap for my stepdad and surprise, surprise, I went back to Trumpet Blossom for lunch. I had a yummy turmeric latte and a spicy squash soup with corn cakes again and I got another Reuben sandwich to have for dinner later. This time I got to chat with Katie, the owner, who mentioned she decorated the restaurant with furniture from her grandmother's house. So of course I had to show her a photo of my grandparents' recently reupholstered wedding couch. You see why I love the aesthetic here. It's well-loved secondhand, full of warm wood and home-sewn napkins. I just, I love this place. I love Trumpet Blossom so much. I had another busy evening signing books. Another shout out to the lovely folks at Prairie Lights. Uh, alongside Lizzie Goodman, author of Meet Me in the Bathroom, which I'll link to below. Then I went to see The Afterlight, which is a collage of films from the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. The premise being that every actor who appears in this film is no longer living. The film exists on a single 35 millimeter print that will, of course, deteriorate each time it's played. 
After the Afterlight, I met up with Lizzie along with Elizabeth Crane and Kathleen Johnson for a storytelling night slash whiskey tasting hosted by the Tuesday Agency, which represents many authors who teach at Iowa. It was a lot of fun, and I wish I could have stayed longer, but I had to be up at 4 a.m. to make my flight. So as I was on my way to New York via Chicago, my sister, brother-in-law, stepsister, and niece were on a New Jersey transit train, super excited to get to screen the film early. So I met up with them in Midtown and we headed to Alice Telly Hall at Lincoln Center. And I got to meet the lovely person who runs the Bones and All News Twitter account. Shout out to you, my dear, and thanks for all you do. I was nervous about my not quite 16 year old niece seeing the film, but I am happy to report that she was not, or at least did not appear to be traumatized. I poked Liv on my left and my sister on my right when it was almost time for my cameo, since I'm only on screen very, very briefly. Oh. <laughs> she kind of looks down at it. She's wearing oh. green. Yeah. Did you catch me? I did. I got you. <laughs> Fortunately, my friends Risa and Jess had managed to snag tickets, so we all went to PS Kitchen afterward, which was fantastic. I'd been excited to try this place not just for the vegan eats, but also because of their emphasis on community service and development. It seems to me that a lot of plant-based restaurants exist solely to capitalize on a trend, so I find the PS Kitchen statement of purpose pretty refreshing. If you've watched my Halloween cooking video, you know I love a savory pastry crust. This pot pie really hit the spot, although it was so filling. Liv and I both gave ours to Kate to finish. The service was excellent here too, fast and efficient. After dessert, we said goodbye to Risa and Jess and Jess's husband, Whitney, and we inched our way back down through Times Square and hopped on the train back to Jersey, tired and very content. Special thanks to my brother-in-law for schlepping my stuff all over Midtown Manhattan. This was a quick but thoroughly enjoyable trip and I am looking forward to telling you all about Los Angeles next.